Well, I want to uh, welcome everybody uh, for coming to the uh, tour today. We are going to uh, take a look at various aspects of the Edinburgh High School uh, to discuss uh, some of the challenges we face uh, in the context of the proposal for uh, building a new high school. So this is a, a classroom where we had a, a steam pipe failure. Um, this part of the building, the A building, which is the original uh, construction from 19, the 19, early 1960s. Uh, the, heating, the heat from the boilers is distributed throughout the building through steam pipes, and those steam pipes happen to be located in the floor, the concrete slab that the building sits on. So in this room, uh, we had a, uh, a failure in the pipes. Uh, it was in the floor over here, uh, and then again up the wall over here. Um, and unfortunately, that happened. It occurred on a Friday uh, late in the day, um, and we didn't uh, find it until Monday. Uh, so in the course of the weekend, uh, the room was destroyed. We, we lost the walls. We lost the ceilings. Uh, we lost most of the educational materials that were in the room. Um, and we have the uh, we have the piping over here that we dug out of the floor and going up the walls. Um, and this is, this is where the failure was here. Um, again, this, these materials are uh, from 1960, so uh, you know, they've, they've run their course. Um, in, in trying to repair this uh, you know, with new piping, what we do is when we reinforce uh, the area that we've repaired, uh, we, we put additional pressure uh, somewhere in the distribution system uh, where uh, the existing piping is particularly weak and cause additional uh, failures and leaks uh, at which have the potential to do uh, you know, this kind of level of damage. Um, <coughs> the, the, the difficult part is if these failures occur during heating season, when the heating system is running, uh, we don't have the opportunity to repair it um, uh, because we can't turn the heat off. Uh, the, the repairs take uh, you know upwards of a week or two, uh, not you know not a day or two. So um, it's it's a uh, it's something where we have to live with a steam leak in the building uh, until heating season is over, and then we can address the repair. We are. Um, in A building, which is part of the original high school, and a couple of the items uh, we wanted to point out here, uh, the floors, whenever you see uh, these kind of uh, steel plates uh, in the floors or the, the reworked tile, uh, that's an indication uh, that we had uh, steam leaks and had to jackhammer the concrete out and uh, do work to a pipe. Uh, we typically um, don't reseal, uh, we put steel plates up uh, to provide us with access in, in case uh, something were to happen in the future. Uh, the other item uh, is the, uh, the lockers, which are uh, original uh, to the building and uh, in some cases missing doors or have doors that aren't functioning. Um, you know, one of the uh, one of the things we did with the design of the new building was uh, meet with students to discuss uh, the value to them for lockers. So uh, the, the, the new high school design represents a much different approach uh, to student mobility um, and has uh, significantly fewer lockers uh, throughout the building. Um, and mainly uh, for two populations, uh, the freshmen who have a transition period to go through, uh, and our CTE students who have uh, typically bags full of equipment and uh, uh, clothing specific to their um, classwork uh, that needs locker rooms. So we, we've accommodated those two populations, and uh, the rest of the student body felt that uh, lockers were not necessary, uh, and uh, they addressed those needs via their backpack. So this is the uh, high school's library and media center. Um, it is uh, where uh, we have air conditioning uh, in, in a 
uh, in a location, the only other place in the building, <coughs> excuse me, that is air conditioned is the principal's office. So uh, for environmental control and warmer weather, uh, this is where uh, it is. Um, our uh, computer systems, equipment, switches, uh, uh, fiber connections um, are in this building uh, because of the environmental control. Uh, it is cooled uh, by a thing called a chiller, which is uh, original to the high school again in the early 1960s. Our chiller uh, is, a, is a, a very uh, large unit uh, in that world um, and no, is no longer supported by the manufacturer in terms of spare parts. Uh, we have uh, repaired our chiller with used parts. We have repaired our chiller with parts that our uh, maintenance department has made on uh, machines that we, we own. Um, but getting spare parts is a, uh, a significant challenge. Um, and, uh, you know, we have tried to uh, outfit uh, this part of the building uh, with uh, modems and routers to allow for uh, wireless access. Uh, again, because of the temperature control. Um, but again, that's not something we can do throughout the, the high school. Uh, we also have uh, some constraints in this in this part of the building uh, in terms of its electrical supply. So our hands are tied as to how much we can do and how far we can push things because the electrical infrastructure in the building won't support anything beyond what we're doing right now. What do you mean manufacturing? Well, uh, it, it's sort of like a car. You know, you buy a car and, you know, Chevy will provide you with parts if your car breaks for 20 years. And then beyond that, you start, you know, going on to, um, you know, car enthusiast sites to find spare parts. So we, we're, we have typically been able to find spare parts uh, at various yeah, I, and I don't know what they are, but they're sort of the equivalent of a junkyard um, to uh, repair the machine. Uh, there are some, you know, third parties who will make some things for us. And again, we've actually fabricated some parts. Y yeah. Yep, yep. Right, they do have all those old Chevys down there. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's uh, that's kind of where we're at. You know, um, it's it's a it's a been a tremendous value to the district. I mean, the thing has far outperformed its life ex ex expectancy. Um, but you know, to replace that, not only do we have to, not only would we benefit from uh, not worrying about it surviving, but we'd uh, the efficiency of a, of a newer unit would be. Uh, significant. You know, we we probably save about uh, 20 percent of what it consumes to operate if we were to replace that unit. So when we talk about our quads, uh, this is the spaces. These are the spaces we're talking about. Um, you can see, you know, behind you. That's all artificial wall. Um, there are four classrooms joined on a, a common corridor. Uh, that corridor was not there originally. None of these classrooms were here originally. This was a big open uh, lecture space. Uh, if you look on the top of the artificial wall, you'll see uh, holes that are kind of plugged up a little bit. Uh, those holes were there to allow for airflow and environmental control. Uh, you'll see the exact same thing on the bottom of the wall where there are spaces and gaps to allow for airflow. Yeah. Airflow and environmental control. Now. Uh, what, what, what has happened, uh, we have four rooms. Now, you, you know, if you imagine your house, um, only one of the four rooms has a thermostat. Mm -hmm. And only one of the four rooms, not the same room, has uh, the actual univent units that control temperature. So whatever, um, whatever temperature and heating condition the room with the thermostat experiences, that's what the univent is addressing. So if that room is far removed from where the univent is uh, across the quad, 
um, the rooms with the unit vent turn into saunas because that room is continually calling for mm -hmm. heat. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where you get, yeah. we had a, we had a, uh, a measure uh, on the day of one of the tours earlier on uh, where the, the room with the, the uh, unit vent was at 81 degrees mm -hmm. and the room uh, with the thermostat was at 63 degrees. Mm -hmm. And that's within the same quad, the same general area. Um, so that's what those spaces were supposed to address. Um, what, what we found is that the, uh, the noise migration exceeded the desire to have reasonable environmental accommodations. You know, they just couldn't teach with the noise. Yeah, well you can hear the uh, And there's only two people there in that room. Yeah. That's so um, so these, these rooms are, are uh, from an environmental perspective, hostile to, to learning. They, they just are. And, um, uh, there isn't a whole lot we can do about it. We could put thermostats in every room. Uh, but what you'd get there is the room with the unit vent in it would be controlled wonderfully at you know, 71 or 72 degrees. Uh, and then the other rooms, because there wouldn't be a call for environmental control, they would be significantly below 70 degrees in, in the winter, uh, which isn't going to help anybody. This is a typical Attleboro High School science lab. Uh, we've got about a half dozen of these in the building. Um, uh, there are a, a, a few things to talk about here. Uh, you can see the numerous plumbing fixtures. Not all of them work. Uh, the even more numerous uh, uh, gas fixtures, not all of them work. Um, the cabinetry uh, is in uh, deplorable condition. Um, so uh, uh, in terms of its functionality, uh, it's quite limited. Um, and then uh, you, you can see the layout. It's, it's spread out wide and broadly and is not conducive uh, to, say, running an experiment and having the class participate and, and be able to see the experiment. So it's, uh, in, in terms of its fundamental layout, it's, it's uh, very difficult to work in. Um, uh, the air handling systems uh, all work well. Um, the, uh, uh, the shower systems in case of emergency are here, but then, you know, uh, uh, in a in a more contemporary building, you'd see a lot more of them uh, uh, to accommodate problems. Um, so, it, you know, uh, uh, they work. They work. They're tested. Yeah. Yeah. So we, you know, when we have uh, uh, one of the uh, important points uh, that we've been trying to make is, uh, you know, we, we try to talk about things in systems. Our plumbing system in this building, when we um, have uh, any kind of plumbing failure, um, just about, uh, the building, the way the building was constructed, uh, there are no shutoff valves. So to address a plumbing system in a science lab, uh, you can't shut off the water to the science lab, do your repair, and get out. You, 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 we basically accumulate repairs, and this is particularly true for bathrooms uh, and bathroom fixtures, and shut the building down three times a year. So the building is shut off, the water is shut off to the building. The building is drained, and then the plumbing repairs take place, and then the water is brought back on. So we, we aren't able to do, you know, fundamental plumbing work, uh, wait till the next shutdown. It's, we literally put a bag over, yes, correct. We, um, when we were doing the assessment of the building to determine whether we repair it, renovate it, or replace it, um, you know, that was done by engineering and architectural firms. The, uh, the group that was asked to come in here uh, and do the electrical evaluation uh, said that this was the worst building they've ever encountered in terms of its electrical. 
Yeah, I can, I can get, yeah, I can get her for, for you. Yeah. They said they never see anything. Independent group just came in to evaluate what can we do to this building electrically to make it better. They went in and said, you can't. <laughs> I'm going to uh, let the district's uh, electrician discuss uh, some of the challenges that we have uh, in our uh, graphic communications department uh, as it pertains to the uh, electrical infrastructure of the high school. Um, a good example of what we face in the high school now is obsolescence. Um, all this equipment is no longer manufactured. So as something fails, to get the part that goes in this panel is virtually impossible, especially to find something that's 20, 25, 30 years old that is new old stock, um, something that if you're going to replace it, you're going to replace it with something that's safe in the panel. So I could have a situation now where this is graphic arts and there's a lot of load in this area because of the equipment. It also covers the Mac lab next door, which is all computers. Um, this breaker now, which we call a shunt trip breaker, due to the fact that there's buttons around this room that if a student or a teacher hit them, it shuts equipment for safety. Um, this is failing. Now it still shuts and that part of it is safe. But the actual breaker now can no longer take the load that's being put on it by the equipment because the internals of it are starting to fail. So right now, they aren't running any equipment in this area, um, which is really <laughs> trying to teach a class without equipment for the next couple of days. I was able to locate a breaker for this in California, so that's being shipped out to me by air, and I will replace this and they'll have this back up and running. But the next time this happens, with any of the other 10 or 15 of these I have in the building. There's nothing that says I will ever find another one of these again. So then it becomes a situation of removing all of this equipment, putting in all brand new equipment to refeed this whole area, which will take not days or hours, but a week of no class with equipment, or two weeks. So there you have it. Uh, you would have to replace the whole what? The whole panel. I would have a panel that I would order from one, another manufacturer like Square D. It would come in with a shunt trip incorporated. I had to do this down in the welding shop where we replaced the whole entire panel. And that took, it was probably a week to a week and a half to get all of that done. So there was no welding in welding for that time. It was classroom. Because for safety's sake, because that was not available and I couldn't find one they felt comfortable with, we were going to replace everything. And that's what we did. So I had to wait for the panel and get everything disconnected, reconnected. And that's not a, a simple chore. These panels were built in 1973 by Federal Pacific. And, um, you know, they went out of business uh, probably in 1974. I'm not really <laughs> sure, but, um, you know. It's, they've gone past their time. Um, they've been obsolete for years. Um, so so the breaker you bought, is it a used or? Um, the one I bought is a new old stock, believe it or not. What's that mean? It's basically a new breaker that was old stock. So it was bought out from somebody that had it oh, okay. in a company that may have gone out of business. But I it was company, never used. No, I have a company in California that I buy through. Mm -hmm. So I can usually call them, give them the numbers, and they'll seek out the breaker if they don't have it. And we find that with a lot of things. It's, just not, it's not just breakers. It's other pieces of equipment that just the parts aren't available. And you can't always replace because it takes days to weeks to get the parts. So these kids right now cannot <coughs> use this equipment? No, right. I've asked the so teacher for safety to not use any of this equipment. So they're wasting their time. Well, uh, well, I wouldn't say well, that, yeah, but it's, it's not full. It fell at a good time only for him out of coincidence mm -hmm. because it's the style of the new trimester. But it's not a good thing to have to point at something. You yeah. like to actually demonstrate some things. So, and he's got jobs he needs to do too with probably the upperclassmen. So he can't do them right now. These uh, thick walls too. Yep. Same idea. Petitions that have been built in an open room. Um, that was probably his classroom originally for graphics. Well, can't so use the equipment. This was a locker room. There's the old dark room. You see the, the black tube there? Oh, yeah. You get inside of that and spin and end up on the other side when you're in the dark room. Yeah. 
so yeah, that, you know, our concerns, and, and these are not new. We're not, we're not just creating these now. These, uh, we've been having these problems for, you know, the better part of a decade. Uh, is we, we, what we see are fundamental systemic problems that we can't address on a, on a small scale that are having uh, direct impact on student learning on a regular basis. The, uh, the building is done. Uh, the building's infrastructure is done, the building's systems are done, and um, I, I think that the, you know, the evaluation made uh, by the uh, MSBA's uh, folks on uh, current conditions and the decision made uh, to push us in, push, because we, we came into the process in a repair track, right, right. That's so to, pu to, to push us into a... Uh, Does someone have that in writing? Because that's another thing I have trouble convincing people that it's true, that the it was the state who you guys applied for what windows and heating, right? Yes. Or, or said you were going to apply, and they said, hey, "No, we did apply." Yeah. And, and yeah. So the the evidence, the hard evidence, would be the submission of the SOIs, which we can certainly give you, yeah. which were submitted through, um, you know, the accelerator repair program. Because if there's a letter that says we would like you to look at replacing the whole building. That would really that make some of the... Yeah, that dialogue took place at the city level with the, well, between the mayor and the director of the uh, MSBA. Uh, um, but, but, you know, so that's, that's uh, what prompted us to move into, uh, you know, a, a new building. Is, right. is it the uh, the, the uh, breakdowns and the problems are just too extensive. Because uh, when um, the whole crew of them came to talk to our editorial board, they talked a lot about that. It was a real eye opener to the editors. They didn't know it was actually the state who suggested this. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, you know, I can I can tell you that the experience we had at the roof when we replaced the roof, you know, we had a very hard time convincing them to to participate mm -hmm. until they sent somebody down. Yeah. This room is is um, part of the main heating line uh, from the boiler room. Because of that. Um, this room cooks in heating season, and there's no way to control it. It's still warm. It's very you warm. You don't stand right there. Yeah, no, it's warm. It all depends on how much steam oilers run. Yeah. Because that outside temperature from that rock, yeah. the hours on the boilers decrease, which means the floors stay hot. Increase. Yeah. Your, your temperature so is coming up from yeah, the Yeah, you would read these floors probably in 80 degrees. We're not intentionally eating this up. This room currently has no active heat in it. It is all coming from the tunnels. And this has been a situation so this, this, is, this is not coming from a baseball. No, it's just right, it's just seeping up from the distribution system for the heat. Yeah. Yeah. Across the hall. I need the lab. Well, it's, it's tough because obviously they have to work. And there isn't a lot of other alternative space. And that becomes a problem. You know, we can't just position space. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we run we run an air conditioner during heating season, just to make it tolerable. And it's not yeah, it's not. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow, that's amazing. It is it, again just indicative of conditions in this building. Yeah. The rooms that were repurposed, it never designed for this purpose. This was a food line in the cafeteria. The cafeteria is on the other side. All those things are still there, and they're still heated and cooled. The original things. This was just petition. It's sometime in the very far past. Where's the exhaust going? They don't have windows. Basically, there is no real exhaust. It just goes out to shoot through the roof that it was attached to. It just exhausts the air. This is an active uh, steam pipe leak. Uh, in the high school, uh, we had to construct uh, this artificial wall around the leak. 
uh, because uh, you know during the day when the heat is on, the temperatures in here get quite excessive, as you can actually feel. Um, and because again, it's heating season, this is not something we can address uh, until later on this spring. So um, you know, it's a it's a problem. I think we have two or three other active uh, steam leaks in the building right now. Um, not not as uh, you know, excessive as this one, but um, you know we we regularly get calls from staff or uh, custodians saying, I you know I hear a hiss or hey it's really hot right here, and we go out and investigate and typically find that the pipe has has uh, failed. <laughs>